In this lesson, we'll create our own custom watercolor brush. So let's say you're working on an illustration here in Photoshop and you want it to have that soft watercolor look. Well, you can easily create your own brush to start to emulate that particular style. So the project file for this lesson is 06begin for those of you following along. So just make sure you have your brush tool selected over here from the toolbar. So once again, we're going to right click here on our canvas, bringing up our brush preset picker. So the brushes that you currently see here are just default brushes that come stocked with Photoshop, as I've already mentioned a few times. Um, for the last two brushes that we've created, we've basically used one of these brush presets to help us get started, okay? Um, so that was from this particular set, which again, you could see this particular set by clicking on the gear and just going to reset brushes. What we're going to do this time is choose another default set here in Photoshop. It's Natural Brushes 2. Okay, so again, just click on the gear and on this flyout menu, a little bit more than uh, about a, a, a third of the way from the bottom of this entire menu, you should see um, Natural Brushes 2. So go ahead and click on that and just click OK. All right, so we have just a few brushes in here. And if you hover over some of these on this third row, they're actually titled watercolor. The one I want to go ahead and start with will be this one right here, watercolor one. And let's go ahead and pick like a something other than black. Okay, maybe like a blue or something. So I'm just going to apply a stroke. And let's zoom in just a little bit here, and have a look at this. So I look at this and this doesn't feel like watercolor to me at all. Okay, so um, we're going to want to start to dive into our brush panel once again and start to tweak some settings to really get that look in the field. But let's go ahead and size this brush tip up again and have a look at the brush tip shape. So again, this is another interesting shape. It's not symmetrical. Okay, it has a very asymmetrical look to it. And if we just tap, you can kind of see what that looks like. And what's really cool about this shape is you have a lot of variation in... Um, opacity. You have some area kind of right here, it's a little bit darker um, and then a little bit lighter over here in this upper area. And so that's great. This is a great tip to start with because it's going to give us a lot of variation. Okay, And it also just looks really soft. Let's have a look at the brush panel. So the first thing I want to tackle, as you can see, we don't really have anything here selected, none of these options other than smoothing, which you can leave that on. The first thing I want to tackle is the spacing because let's say I just draw at this size, okay? You can see how that just feels extremely mechanical, right? So I want to take the spacing all the way down to the lowest possible percentage, which is one. And now that's going to really help us get something that feels a lot more fluid, okay? A lot more painterly, if you will. So once we've done that, let's come over here to transfer. And again, for transfer, I just want opacity and flow, um, both of their controls set to pen pressure. Okay. And then the next thing I want to go ahead and do is have a look at scattering. And we'll just take the scattering up just a little ways here. And so that's going to give us just a little bit of variation along the edge of the stroke as we paint. Okay. In addition to our ability now to really dictate just that opacity and that flow of the stroke. My brush kind of jumped there just for a second. So just kind of testing it out now, both um, seeing how the, my ability to apply pressure here on my Cintiq to really kind of dictate some different values, some darks, different darks and lights of this particular um, hue. And then the scattering, I think, will work nicely as well. Now here is, a, here is an option right here, wet edges, that's really going to pull, it, pull all of what we just did together, and it's wet edges. So this basically does what the description says, it emphasizes the edges of the brush stroke. So you can uh, basically engage this. There's no options over here for wet edges, okay? But check this out. So it's, it's emulating 
kind of that, that look and that feel you would get from watercolor where you kind of have that little bit of that bleed along the right of the edge where the water kind of collects um, and kind of um, builds up a little bit of that, that pigment. What's super cool about this is if I apply very lightly, you can kind of see what that looks like. But then if I apply more pressure, those wet edges become even more emphasized. Right? Now let's turn off transfer really quick just so you can kind of see what this looks like. So with transfer off, it's always going to look like this no matter what pressure I apply. So having transfer compounded with the wet edges, now you get some really nice variation. I just think that looks so cool. Just kind of playing around with that, seeing how it looks. Again, you can start to see it without scattering if you want to kind of see how that looks. And that just looks too clean, again, along the edge. It looks too too pristine. So having that scattering there just gives you that nice variation. Um, that, that combined with that kind of bleed along the edges, the wet edges, really helps pull everything together as well. Okay, so just these options right here, I think, make a big difference. Okay, so you can start to kind of play around with some different colors, start to, um, you know, explore this even further. Um, there's some other, other watercolor tips here that you may want to try out. This is just one particular shape, okay? But I think these are great ones to start with. Again, with any of these brushes, um, there's so many default brushes that come stocked with Photoshop. Try a lot of different ones out, um, regardless of what specific type of brush you're wanting to create. You might be surprised by something. There could be something there, that a particular shape that just works really well. Um, so don't feel like you're bound only to this one is what I'm saying. Okay. All right. Very cool. So just as we've done before, we'll go ahead and save this brush preset just to, to further reiterate. So you just click on this little button right here in your brush panel, create new brush, title it, whatever you want to call it, click OK. It's going to add it right down here. Okay. And it's recording whatever size you currently had it at. So it was 150 in this case. And it saves it. Now, if you switch to another brush set, okay, you're, like let's say we go back to uh, reset brushes, we click OK. Well, it's prompting me if I want to save the changes to this set, okay? So just as we've already demonstrated before, you would want to um, basically cancel out of that, and you, you want, you're going to want to save this brush preset. So click on the gear, go to Preset Manager, select that brush right there if you want or you could delete all the others, R really either one is fine, and then just choose Save Set, and of course you can save it wherever you want to, right? And so let's say I'd now take this one and I delete it, okay? And then I go ahead and tap Load. There's the ABR that I just saved. Click Load, and it adds it right there. So you could add it to any um, set that you're currently working with. When I'm creating these individual brushes, I mean, if, if it's uh, an individual watercolor brush, a pencil brush, and a chalk brush, I, I'll just save them by themselves. But if you have a whole bunch of watercolor brushes you've saved, it might be a good idea to kind of save them all together in their own set. Um, really, it's all up to you.